russellformining.com.au and joining me today is the CEO for GTI Energy, Bruce Lane. Bruce, how are you today? Yeah, hi Shay, uh, it's great to be back with you again. Uh, thrilled to have you on and congratulations for your resource estimate increasing for the Low Herma deposit. Uh, can you talk me through some of the key highlights here? Yeah, look, we um, we were hoping to increase the resource to around uh, in the range seven to eight million pounds, and we've overshot that um, and got a fifty percent upgrade, which now gives us uh, eight point five seven million pounds. A uh, couple of things uh, about that: we've been able to um, elevate uh, about thirty percent of the resource into the indicated category, which is which is really important. Uh, that uh, really gives us what we need to proceed with the scoping study, which is. Uh, which is an, is our next step. And the other thing to note is that that then gives us uh, in excess of 10 million pounds of JORC inferred, or JORC compliant resources, sorry, uh, inferred and indicated across all of our Wyoming projects. So it's given us that um, boost in scale that we were looking for. And uh, there's a clear path forward, both to expand the resources and also to move um, the Low Herma project forward uh, towards development. You mentioned there that moving into the scoping study was one of the next steps that you'll be taking. Uh, what else comes for GTI Energy going into 2025? Yeah, well, the scoping study is probably our, it's our, it's very much our main priority from here. Um, we've already commenced work to um, support the study. So uh, metallurgical testing, for instance, we've done some check assays so that we've uh, established uh, at least a guide on the disequilibrium. So that's neutral. So uh, that's positive for us. Um, and in addition, we've got uh, some MET samples going into the lab. So the, the MET samples really are focused on um, uh, testing for alkaline leachability. So just uh, uh, for a bit of context there, all of the projects in Wyoming in situ recovery projects are amenable to alkaline leach. The only project that uh, isn't permitted as an alkaline leach project is um, Peninsula's Lance project which is the first one in Wyoming that's been permitted for acid. So that's in an older formation um, for your um, for the for the viewers that are more technically inclined. It's in a in a an older formation the, in the Cretaceous, uh, tighter marine sands, um, and a different metallurgical setup. So uh, to get the recoveries out of those and to get the ball field flows. Um, they look to use um, uh, acid leach, whereas the rest of the projects in Wyoming are in the younger formations and, uh, and they're, they're a looser sand, they're, they're more amenable to an alkaline leach. And so what we want to do is just confirm that um, the material, the ore that we're seeing um, is amenable. We, we fully expect it to be. Um, you know, Cameco's Smith, Smith Ranch Highland, 10 miles away to our east, is an alkaline project and uh, as a is the Shirley Basin and the uh, and the Lost Creek projects owned by UR Energy uh, to to our west. So, uh, as are all the other projects in the basin. So we we're just checking in on that, uh, and then we've got hydrology work to do, which um, we're thinking will be completed in January. Now, um, all those things go into the scoping study, um, along with the other you know inputs that you would expect from a scoping study. So, we'll be focusing on those, and um, we hope to have. Um, you know, something on that, you know, early in the new year, look, it, it, it may take longer than the first quarter. Um, so certainly in the first half, um, but that's very much our focus uh, for 2025. Uh, that's fantastic, Bruce. But how does this particular deposit compare to surrounding ones? Yeah, Shay, it's um, the reason we were sort of shooting for that eight million pound mark um, is that uh, the Shirley Basin deposit, um, which is UR Energies and is being developed uh, in, in the Shirley Basin, which is you know around about 40 or 50 miles away from where we are at Low Herma, is 8.8 .8 million pounds. So it's under construction at the moment. We've, uh, there's a PEA that was published for that during this year. So we can see the very positive economics from that study. And we think that um, our product project would look something like that in terms of obviously the capex and the scale. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, there are some some differences in terms of the the ore body, but um, but but uh, we think that broadly speaking, the uh, the project might look similar. Um, and also, um, Alnquer Energy have a deposit in the Gas Hills um, uh, around eight point one million pounds, which also has a PEA on it, and shows very positive economics. So we, you know, in our internal modelling, our preliminary modelling certainly suggests that a de deposit of that size 
um, is viable as a satellite and even potentially as a central processing plant. So we'll develop scenarios around that during our scoping process um, so that hopefully we can show the demonst- and demonstrate the, uh, the commercial viability through that process. And sort of just to shift gears a little bit, I wouldn't mind uh, lightly touching on some of the things moving the uranium market at the moment. Now, the spot price is rather subdued, but we've seen a complete pivot on demand for uranium coming from data centres within the US. What macro influences do you see driving uranium at the moment? Yeah, there's some really exciting things happening, aren't there? And I think if you look at um, the nuclear power business, it's completely transformed. Uh, when we first started out on the uranium journey with GTI back in 2019, uh, we were really looking at uh, the, the the supply side issue, which was you know close to a couple of hundred million pounds of annual demand, and the US not producing any of its 50 million pound annual requirements. So a massive sort of challenge there. Um, but in addition, primary mine supply globally, you know, around 140 million pounds. So you know a big gap there as well, and that that gap was getting uh, kind of getting bigger and bigger. So that was where we started out, but we didn't have all this extra demand, uh, you know, uh, energy in our, in our thinking. And we didn't, we didn't see or understand the scale of the data center challenge, the amount of electricity that's required. And I, I really think most people don't have any appreciation of how much electricity is required just for data centers, let alone electrification of, the, uh, the transport fleet and a raft of other influences on the demand for electricity uh, other than the normal ones of, uh, of people being pulled out of poverty and buying refrigerators and air conditioners and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, globally, it is a huge challenge. And uh, I think the, the right thinking countries on the planet are all grabbing for everything and it'll be gas and it'll be nuclear and it'll be whatever they can to generate more electrons. And if you listen to the Trump administration's rhetoric, um, you know, it, it's really about energy self-sufficiency as the first stop and then energy dominance. And they understand the cost of energy is a massive driver in terms of economic prosperity. And that, that is an absolute truth. So, you know, I think what we're going to see with the Trump administration is some big announcements on, after inauguration on a number of things. And hopefully there'll be something in there that confirms that he's not going to pull away support for the nuclear power business through the IRA and that they'll keep They'll keep that support there through tax credits and investment credits, which is really helping underpin their profitability going forward. So the utilities are on watch for that. The utilities are also trying to absorb the fact that Russia has now banned the export of enriched enriched product to the U.S. And remembering the U.S. purchases 25% of its enriched uranium from Russia. There were a freighter turned up at some, in St. Petersburg a week or two ago to collect its, its, its enriched uranium, and it was turned away and went home without its product. Uh, that's at least our understanding of, of what occurred. So uh, utilities are trying to absorb that, and at the same time, they are trying to contract uranium. You saw NextGen, um, which uh, came out a few days ago and said that they've contracted around £5 million to a consortium of US utilities, That's forward contracted for a project that hasn't even turned a shovel yet. It's not even finalised through its approvals. They won't have product available till, are they saying 28 or 29? Whether you believe that, I don't know. Um, And they've paid, uh, they've agreed to pay a floor of 79 bucks and a a ceiling of 150. So there's some really big things happening. And we think the new year, some of those things will have have kind of come to fruition in terms of the, the utilities may be more comfortable to get out there and, uh, and really get on with their long-term contracting. And we may see the price respond within that first and second quarter of next year. Uh, listen, Bruce, there is certainly some very impressive undercurrents here for uranium, as well as for your Loherma project. Uh, thank you so much for being here today and also congratulations on this fantastic upgrade. Yeah, thanks, Shay. Great to talk to you again and uh, hopefully we can talk again in the new year. 